If you're a fan of the MacBook Pro Touch Bar and you're sorry to see it go missing on the new MacBooks, or you just want to see a Touch Bar capability on your new laptop, then maybe I have a solution for you. Look what I found. I have found a Touch Bar app, which just about has all the functionality a real Touch Bar has. But best of all, this Touch Bar can be placed on any screen in any position and it changes to match the app that currently has focused instantaneously, unlike the iPad sidecar touch bar. Oh, and best of all, it's free. Hello, I have here a 2017 MacBook Pro, which comes with a physical touch bar built in, and I really like it. Yes, Perhaps I'm one of the minority that likes the touch bar, but I have my reasons, so I invite you to hear me out. I think you all agree by the end of this video why a touch bar is useful with the right apps. Now, I use this MacBook for light Final Cut Pro editing and third stage raw clip trimming when I take the footage off all these GoPro cameras. The touch bar lets me get to the video trimming functionality quickly and accurately without the need to remove any fingers from the keyboard when using QuickTime to trim those clips. When you have hundreds of short GoPro clips to trim before importing into Final Cut Pro, it can really shave off a lot of time. Doing the raw clip trimming like that before importing into Final Cut Pro gets rid of the unwanted, never be used end of clips. You know, those parts of the clips where you have your hand in front of the camera to switch it off or switch it on, reposition the camera, or in my case, the end of clips because my camera's just fallen over in the grass. All those trimmings, of hundreds of video clips add up to save gigabytes of HD space in the Final Cut Pro's project, especially when it's converted to proxy and pro res clip. In Final Cut Pro, I use that touch bar to view the entire timeline while being able to move about it, zoom in on clips, zoom out to where I was without any faffing. I never quite understood why that particular feature was not part of the GUI in the first place. I think it's just really, really useful in my opinion. That's it, that's my use cases. Not much, but very effective use cases, I think. Now, the rest of the time, the touch bar is not really used for much else. This is where I agree with a lot of people because yes, for other time, for other apps, the touch bar is a waste. It just replicates buttons that are already available, not adding any functionality or value. So unless you have a specific use case, I can see why the touch bar has been seen as a bit of a pointless gimmick. But having said that, I still like it and I want it back. In my opinion, it makes the MacBook Pro stand out from the other laptops out there, and I want to see it come back in some form. I would like to see it as a configuration option when you go to buy a new MacBook or a new Mac Pro. To be honest, while this MacBook is coming on for six plus years old now, it is that touch bar is one of the main reasons I'm hanging on to it because I find it so useful. But inevitably, I'll have to make the jump to the new M series laptop because the battery is old and very likely before then, Apple will stop providing any OS upgrades for it in the next year or so. Now, that is particularly important to me because I found on other Macs which I've not kept up to date with the latest OS, Apple stopped providing Final Cut Pro upgrades. That is really, really irritating and renders the machine kind of redundant. Now, some of you might be thinking if you have a recent iPad, you can use the sidecar functionality on it to activate the touch bar and so be available to any Mac. Yes, you can, but I have not found that to be the perfect solution. Let me explain. When I have decided in a moment's notice, oh, I want to use the touch bar, it'd be very quick. No, just the opposite. In fact, it's a real fact to set up. First, for optimal performance and response from the iPad, I connect it to my Mac using a Thunderbolt cable. Having done that, open up System Preferences, scroll down, select Displays. From there, select the drop menu for selecting the iPad. OK, Sidecar is now activated. But those screens behind me have an arrangement. And I'll be lucky if they stay in the same arrangement. 50% of the time, I will have to sit there now and rearrange my screens to get them exactly where they were before I left them last time. So sidecar gets set up, but I'm not finished there yet. No, the touch bar, which is only available on the iPad, becomes visible when the app you want the touch bar to work with is moved to the iPad screen. And in this case, it's Final Cut Pro or QuickTime. Why that functionality? I have no idea. Having moved it 
to the iPad, the iPad is not where I want to use it. So I have to move the app back. Now this is where it gets kind of frustrating. Put it on the iPad, moved it back, the touch bar loses focus again. And why? It does not always happen, but I have not found out why what I'm doing wrong to stop it from happening. Another irritation is if you want to use another app, say the music app, and you want the touch bar for that, you have to move the music app to iPad for five seconds that you want to use it, and then move it back on. Of course, Final Cut Pro touching that, giving it focus, won't activate the touch bar, so you have to move the Final Cut Pro back to the iPad screen, give it focus, move it back, and you see where this is going. It just goes round in a bit of a circle. Let me know down in the comments if there is a way to get that touch bar to automatically change focus to match the app you're currently using. That would really, really make a big difference to the functionality of that sidecar touch bar. Now, the other issue is the iPad is a big device, and to mimic that touch bar, that fin thing, I need to place it next to the keyboard, like so. In my case, I have a big desk, so I have a lot of space to work with. But this is not going to work for everybody. So unless I'm using the iPad specifically as a drawing aid, I tend not to use the Sidecar app. But I do use Sidecar a lot when I'm using it alongside my MacBook Pro as a second screen. So you can see this is far from ideal. It's so close in many ways, but far enough away that the Sidecar touch bar is an inconvenience rather than a good convenience. So this got me thinking, if I want a touch bar, Maybe there are other people who want a touch bar too, and maybe that can be satisfied with a touch bar device that you can attach to your Mac and place next to your keyboard. Has anyone built an external touch bar device using a touch bar screen taken from another MacBook Pro? So I went searching and I did find this. When I saw it, I thought that is exactly what I want. And it looks absolutely fantastic. In almost the same time I went, wow, the next moments turn into instant disappointment. It is a mock-up, it's a concept created by Yanko Design, and so it's not available to buy. On further searching, I did re reveal other variations on that concept. Again, all concepts, so you cannot buy them. But that goes to show there are other people out there who are interested in mocking up these concepts. So I persevered with my searching, then I came across a Reddit thread where a guy wanted a touch bar functionality and it was suggested him to use the Duet app, which allows other devices like your iPhone to become a secondary screen to your Mac. This supported the touch bar functionality, but due to the small screen size, it was not really practical for what I wanted. So I continued my quest. On another forum, I saw someone mention a touch bar simulation app, and they provided a link to it. Fantastic. And this is the touch bar app running on my Mac Pro right now. And I've got to say, it does everything the real touch bar does in every way except the touch bit. But it is way, way better than the iPad sidecar in so many ways. The main one is the, the fact that when you give an app focus, the touch bar simulation app updates to match the app you're touching in real time on any app on any screen. That touch bar app can also be moved to any monitor in any position at will. It even work on the iPad screen if the sidecar is enabled, but hey, that's an unnecessary. It has several options to suit your needs available from the menu, and it keeps getting better. It can be made transparent if you wish. It also has a screen capture button too, though I haven't used it myself too much. But the best of all, it's a lightweight app which can be installed very quickly, and it comes for free. All I would say is just give a post to the programmer and say thanks for such a brilliant app or buy him a coffee. As I typed this very script, in fact, pages in the touch bar simulation app popped up the next possible set of words I, as I typed, predicting the next word. Quite a useful feature I found, I must say. But I did try to record it, but unfortunately the focus was on the recording app and not pages. But I think you'll get the idea from what you're seeing here. The touch bar simulation app is available from Sindri Sirkris, website alongside with numerous Mac apps he has developed. Scroll down the list of applications, which is quite impressive, and you'll find the simulation app. Select it, and from there, it will take you to the associated GitHub repository. 
on the front page of the repository is the Mac installation package for the touch bar simulator. Download it and install it. Now, if you're running OS Catalina or later, you will need to give the application permission to run on your Mac using system preferences. Instructions how to do this are provided in the touch bar's simulation app's readme file. On reflection, the touch bar simulation app is not going to change the minds of the touch bar naysayers. But for the fans like me of the touch bar past and want to see some form of touch bar functionality going forward on new Macs, I think this is a really great solution. It certainly has helped me retain the workflow I've had on my 2017 MacBook Pro and now lets me have that same functionality almost on my Mac Pro. Apple, I would buy a Mac Pro keyboard tomorrow if it had a touch bar embedded in it. Every time I look at my Mac Pro's keyboard, I think there's something missing. It needs a touch bar. It's a Pro, right? Make an alternative keyboard with a touch bar built in, charge a zillion dollars, and yes, I would likely buy it. Well, at least this app goes a long way to satisfying that omission. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then do because that tells YouTube that you liked it too. That click really helps this channel out, and I appreciate it very much. You see that subscription button? Click on that to turn on notifications to be sure not to miss future videos. Keep safe, keep well, and I'll catch up with you guys next time. And oh, if you do have any comments on how to make iPad sidecar even better, work it better, please let me know down in the comments.